In the ACS library. My name is Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just five minutes a day. In today's video, we continue in our nav log. We will pick up where we left off, covering task PAIDK3. Today, we will be covering descent data. In this video, I'll demonstrate two different ways to find top of descent in case your aircraft's POH is absent descent data. The Piper Archer's POH typically includes descent data, while the POH found in Cessna 172 does not, for example. If your POH is equipped with descent data, please refer to that instead. This is the information we are looking for. Let's work our way through it. We will calculate a 5,300 foot descent from our cruise altitude of 10,500 to Tuella's traffic pattern altitude of 5,200. Assuming that we will maintain an indicated airspeed of 90 knots and a descent rate of 500 feet per minute, we can put the rest of our puzzle together. These two values are selected prior to flight by the pilot. Using a calculator, we find the time required to descend. 5,300 feet to descend divided by 500 feet per minute results in a 10.6 minute long descent. The next step is to find ground speed. Based on conditions today, we find an expected ground speed of 103 knots. The last piece of the puzzle is distance, which can easily be found using our E6B by aligning the indicator with expected ground speed and reading distance over time. Here we find that after traveling 103 knots over 10.6 minutes, we will have covered 18.2 nautical miles. We will select a distance of 19.2 nautical miles from Tuella's runway, increasing our distance by a mile to account for our distance from the runway on downwind, which we can expect to intercept roughly a mile from the airport in the Cessna 172. 19.2 nautical miles from Tuella would be our top of descent point. The other method of calculating top of descent is to use the 3 to 1 rule, plugging our values into the formula shown at the bottom. The 3 to 1 rule simply says that as long as we maintain a rate of descent 5 times our expected ground speed, we can expect to travel 3 nautical miles for every 1,000 feet we descend. Let's assume that most conditions remain the same as the previous problem. We plan to descend 5,300 feet from cruise altitude to traffic pattern altitude at an indicated airspeed of 90 knots, resulting in a ground speed of 103 just like earlier. This means for us that we need to maintain our rate of descent stuck at 515 or 103 times 5 feet per minute. Once we've done the math, 5300 divided by 1000 is 5.3 and then multiply that value by 3, we can expect to travel 15.9 nautical miles throughout our descent to TPA. We will add a mile to this to account for our distance from the center of the runway while in pattern, resulting in a distance of 16.9 nautical miles. After performing either method, an additional mile can be added as a buffer to account for pilot error maintaining airspeed or rate of descent. We will do this in the example, leaving us with a final distance of 17.9 nautical miles. We'll just say 18 nautical miles, but we're still missing some information. We need to find our expected time spent descending. Similar to finding distance, using our E6B, we will align our ground speed of 103 and the indicator, only this time, we will read time under expected distance. Based on 18 nautical miles, we find a time of 10 and a half minutes. Once all top of descent calculations are complete, we head back to our sectional and mark our distance of 18 nautical miles from Tuella. Again, we note that this point falls directly on top of another waypoint. Our top of descent information can be transferred over to our nav log now including some descent info in the notes. We'll also make note of Tuella's traffic pattern altitude. To find these times, we simply find the time it takes to travel 10 and 8 miles instead of just 18. Fuel burn will be discussed in detail in a later video. For descent, I typically use cruise fuel burn unless the POH has descent fuel burn listed. To reiterate, for top of descent, the first step is always to find pressure altitude, wind, and temperature data. We can select an indicated airspeed and rate of descent, find our ground speed based on predetermined indicated airspeed, and our expected time and route based on predetermined rate of descent, and again, based on ground speed and time, we find distance and fuel burn. Or, we can select an indicated airspeed, calculate ground speed from there, and use the 3 to 1 rule. As long as we maintain a rate of descent equal to ground speed times 5, we can expect to travel 3 nautical miles for every 1,000 feet we descend. Once we have found distance, we use distance and ground speed to find time and desired descent rate. Lastly, we find fuel burn using our E6B. This concludes today's video over descent data. Once again, if your aircraft's POH is equipped with descent data, use that information instead. Thank you for watching, and I hope it's been helpful. 
A like, share, subscribe, or comment are always greatly appreciated. Safe vlog.